We got Shannon Moore on the line. Shannon, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. That's good. Shannon, um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about uh, your background uh, in wrestling before starting with uh, WCW? Uh, before starting with WCW, uh, WCW, it goes back to uh, around 1995. Um, I grew up with Matt and Jeff Hardy from WWF, and um, I did the trampoline deal with them as far as for a couple of years, but they transformed the trampoline into a hard ring and you know back then I wasn't but 14, 15 years old and um, you know I was just too light for the hard ring so I had to uh, put my career on hold for like a year so therefore I took over the camcorder started recording the shows for, for about a year, year and a half and then finally I got in the ring and um, you know Jeff he, he started training with me some and uh, Matt started working with me some and I finally had my first match and um, just did the independent scene for three or four years doing the Nashville um, MCW deal and um, doing that little TV section there. And then I did the Omega, the organization of modern extreme grappling arts, which was run by uh, Matt Hardy. And um, we did that for years. That was our little local federation right there. And, um, you know, that just went on and went on until finally I got my break. Now, when you're doing the Omega shows, I mean, were were those guys like wrestling like a couple times a night, like on a show, like with a mask, then come back without the mask and things like that? Um, that wasn't Omega. That was the Federation before Omega, which was NFWA. Whenever mm -hmm. we do the um, the fair shows, yes, uh, you know, maybe two or three times a night, you know, a person would wrestle, one would come out with a mask on, then he'd wrestle without the mask on, and you know, we just tried to make use of what guys that we had. And uh, we just try to put on the best show as possible. Give as many oh, characters. Wait. Jeff Hardy was Will of the Wisp, right? Yeah. So he worked twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I always remember Jeff Hardy's Will of the Wisp and Jeff Hardy on a lot of shows. I, I didn't know which groups, but, um, yeah, back then. Um, were you guys used to, you, so you all, you all grew up as, as huge wrestling fans then, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any, um, what, what do you, I mean, was that uh, Ric Flair or post Ric Flair in the Carolinas? Um, probably, it was probably Ric Flair, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as, like, um, let's see, how old are you right now? I'm 20. Oh, you're 20? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, um, let's see. So, 10 years ago would have been, so you never really saw the um, the old Jim Crockett promotions then. You probably would have already been WCW by then. Right, right? yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I haven't, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't old enough really to, uh, I guess, admire that. Now, so how old were you when you started doing, um, you know, um, um, what would you what do you consider your first professional matches? Like um, 16, 17, or? Probably uh, 15. 15? I yeah, I did the, um, let me see, hold on. I think it was April, uh, April 8, 1995. I think that was my first match, actually. Wow. And at that, I mean, at that point, did you know, you know, you, were, you wanted to be a pro wrestler? Or was it something that you were like a, a thousand percent behind, or was it, you know, because of the size and everything, were you ever discouraged because of being smaller or anything? No way, I was never discouraged by size. I just, it was just something that told me that wrestling was my thing. That's what I was gonna do. How much did like the success of someone like uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. You know, because that was right, right as he was first coming to the U.S. That gave you know, me he, that right there. That. That that made me push that much harder just staying Ray in there, because you know just how how small Ray was. That that just showed me right there that you know size didn't really matter. And you know Shawn Michaels he wasn't you know he wasn't the biggest guy neither. So that kind of you know pushed me a little bit too. Mm hmm. Um. And WCW. Um. Now what what, what uh, I mean the Hardy Boys were already in WWF when you got your break with WCW right? Right. And uh, how did that all come about? As far as me getting my break? As far as, like, the WCW, did they find you in Did they spot you in Nashville, or where did you go to them? Yes, um, actually, um, Matt, he, uh, he knew Chris Canyon from, you know, ways back, whenever Chris Canyon was doing some work with WWF, and, um, I just asked Matt, you know, because I knew Chris was down there, and I sent a tape to Chris. This is after the whole MCW era or whatever, after I'd been out there doing the Bad Street Boys gimmick. And um, we had a little video put together, as a little music video put together as the Bad Street Boys, which uh, Shane Helms was in there too, and um, Joey Matthews and Christian York. And uh, it was us four. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Matt, and I, I finally sent Chris Canyon a tape and stuff. And um, just uh, that's, that's what uh, Bischoff was looking for or whatever, and Bischoff happened to see it. And that's how I got hired. Now, when you when you came in, uh, was, was Three Count originally supposed to be a babyface tag team? Three count. Um, well, 
it's kind of weird because at the beginning or whatever, you know, I really didn't come in to be three count. There was a whole nother idea, which I never even heard about, you know, that, that I was supposed to be in. And um, after the mix-up happened at the beginning with Bischoff and everything, it's kind of like we were left in the wind. And then Jimmy Hart, he had this idea for three count, which, you know, he, he had already had Evan Courageous there. And, um, you know, his, his idea just fit us perfect. He wanted to do some kind of young team bop thing because he believed that he could make money just because of the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears. They were all in. And um, it, it's just it's Jimmy Hart's idea. he come up with the whole deal. And um, he just he, he, he had it set in his heart that he could make money. It was just, you know, it could. Well, the whole thing is, is you know, I mean, thing of Jimmy Hart's background, you know, one of the things when he was breaking into wrestling that hit real big was Rock and Roll Express. Right. And so I'm sure he was looking at like you know modern day Rock and Roll Express type of a thing. And I know, like, I mean, my impression of the three count originally was that you were supposed to, he was, he wanted this WCW Saturday Night to be totally separate from Nitro and Thunder, kind of like his own little mini promotion. Right. And and you guys, you know, being pushed as baby faces. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, you know, and I kind of heard about that, you know, you were doing the music videos and things like that. And then the next thing you know, you're on uh, Nitro doing kind of a spoof on that character and doing it as as in a heel role. Well, I mean, it's just. I mean, whatever they put us out there, whatever, it's obvious that, you know, Jimmy's not really got control of the whole show right now. And, I mean, Jimmy, he'd love for it to be a babyface, you know, type deal. But, you know, it's just that the fans now, they're so anti. It's like, we're just so good that they're going to hate us, you know. It's just like, that's just the way the fans come on to us. So I guess that's the role that we're going to take for right now, anyways. Do you enjoy this, uh, this, ca this character? Oh, I love it. I love it because, I mean, it's me, you know, just a young... The young cat just out, you know, out in the ring doing my thing. Brian, anything real quick before we Did uh, Jimmy write those two songs? He had to have written the second one. Do I know? <laughs> or was that you guys? Did, did Jimmy Hart write those two songs? Yes, Jimmy wrote both the songs. <laughs> and I knew he had to have written the second one. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy. Because... Jimmy's behind all the music and the lyrics on the songs, and um, as far as it goes with us singing them, it's me, Evan, and Shane. We're really singing the songs, and, you know, what you hear is really us. <laughs> so um, hopefully... Um, Coming up soon, we're going to actually have a single coming out. I hope they promote it better than uh, those. <laughs> Maybe it'll go vinyl like Evan Courageous said. <laughs> do what? What do you say? Go, go vinyl. Go vinyl. Yeah. What's, uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts as far as like the thing they're doing with uh, with Tank Abbott? Tank Abbott, um, I, I enjoy it. I, I think it's good. It's entertaining. It's, um, it, I think it's good for the both of us. Um, you know, it's just it, it's going to get a response. So I, you know, I'm pleased with it. Especially the reaction we got so far. Entertainment Weekly, this week's Entertainment Weekly, has a short article on the Urban Wrestling Federation. Brian, you, we, we, we talked about the Urban Wrestling Federation one time before. I think so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, this is, uh, this, is, this is in this week's issue. Uh, the Urban Wrestling Federation will target the growing segments of African Americans who already follow shows like SmackDown. And then it says... 30% of UPN's 7.4 million wrestling fans are black. I find that number to be, whose demo was that? That's the most, I, I, there's no way. There's no way in the world that number's right. Anyway, the lure says, uh, uh, what's it called? It says RLR. Oh, I guess RLR is the association that's promoting this thing. Vice President Gary Rosen is to offer hip-hop music with the grunting and grappling. It will be very street with a DJ, uh, and he's hopeful it will attract a mainstream audience. Though maybe months before they find a network to carry it, the Urban Wrestling Federation may already be onto something. The WF is already establishing a successful urban connection by incorporating hip-hop stars like Kid Rock into the action and producing music videos featuring a Run DMC song. Still, Vincent Mann's camp doesn't feel like they're about to get a full Nelson from the UWF. Quote, oh, that's my favorite, Jim Byrne. Different producers take a run at the WWF genre, but what usually happens is these shows never see the light of day, says Senior VP of Marketing Jim Byrne. Quote, in the process, they gain incredible appreciation for how much goes into what we do. So there you have it. Mm. So anyway, so they're in the news again. I don't think there's anything much to this. Uh, let's go to Terry in North Carolina. You're first up with Shannon Moore. Hello, how you doing, um, David? I'm doing good. How about you, Brian? Doing good. All right, how you doing, Shane? What's up, man? How are you? Shannon, Shannon. Shannon. Okay, my fault. Okay, <laughs> this is the other guy. <laughs> okay, yes, I got a question to ask you too. Okay, um, is it true that um, y'all and the young guy is gonna be in a um, in a um, ladders match? In a ladders match? Um, as of right now, there's nothing definite, but um, 
hopefully, you know, something like that that come up with those. Um, I'm ready for it. It'd be pretty entertaining, I think. Yeah, because I was hearing uh, Mark Mary talking about it on WCW Live a few times. Oh, really? Yeah, I've heard I've heard something mentioned about it, so um, hopefully it could come up. Maybe uh, maybe at the pay-per-view, maybe not. I, I don't know. There's nothing in stone right now, but um, hopefully it'll, it'll be soon. Yeah, because I'd like to see y'all in a tables match also, too. Yeah, I, I, I'm ready to do it. I'm down for whatever. Okay. I'd just like to see you get a pay-per-view match just to go 10 minutes where you're not so constrained by time like you are on TV. Yeah, I know. Just, just to be able to go in there and, and, and do a match because, you know, you've had some, I think, really good, you know, short tele, you know, four-minute type TV matches. Yeah, have you, uh, have you, did you guys get to catch any of this week, stuff? Uh, we, we watched, uh, you know, um, I mean, we watched, we watched pretty much have seen all the shows, yeah. I mean, yeah. when you first, um, was it, I guess about a week or two ago, the first, it was a week ago Monday when you were, when you first came back to Nitro. Uh huh. I, I believe it was Nitro. Was it Thunder or Nitro? I'm so confused. It was um, Thunder, I think. It was a Nitro show. Was it Nitro? See, we're all confused. I just remember it was, I think it was Nitro a week ago Monday, because we were, because we were talking about it. it had to be, because we were talking about how there were two good matches on the same Nitro, which there hadn't been in a while, and your match was one of them, and it was just like, you know, like, I think that you guys were were on TV regularly, and then they went through uh, change. Even Russo was brought in, and then all of a sudden, you know, you and the Young Dragons are all off TV, and you were having probably the best TV matches in the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, we're back to TV against each other, and it was like another really good match. And it was like, wow, you know, it's like we we could watch Nitro forever, or not forever, but I mean, the one thing is, is that it would always be good for Nitro to open with a match like that because at least you know it's it's it, you you start off on kind of an upbeat note, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Can I get in one more question? Sure, go ahead, Jerry. Okay, yes, I'm Shannon. Okay, um, the thing about Jimmy Hart or whatever, um, I can't believe that he's having help with um some of y'all um music also too. I can't hear you. Can you I don't think. Well, he what did you say? What did you say? I don't think he's producing everything by itself because it's kind of obvious because a lot of his um production in WCW sound more of the '80s. Well, Jimmy Hart's kind of like an '80s '80s uh, musical mind, or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, because because. The songs that he writes, there he in the early '80s he used to write these songs, these little songs in Memphis, with uh, God who he actually sung them himself, and they would do music videos to him, and um, it was kind of cute at the time because no one in wrestling, you know, that was like way above, you know, ahead of what anyone else in wrestling was doing. It was way before, you know, like uh, you know the the the, the WWF uh, Rock and Wrestling Connection, which came about three years later. How old is he? Yeah, Jimmy Hart, Memphis in in eighty in I'm saying I'm thinking about eighty one, eighty two. I remember it like. Like he I mean, did how old is he right now? How old's Jimmy Hart? Yeah. Jimmy Hart's real old. He was in the I, Gentries. That was like the early 60s. The Gentries were mid-60s, I'm thinking. Because, um, I mean, the Cinnamon Girl and, and, and Why Should I Cry, I mean, I'm thinking that's like 65, 66. Um, Jimmy Hart, I mean, he's, he's several years older than Jerry Lawler. Because they, they went to high school. They went to the same high school in Memphis. Okay, so Jerry Lawler is 50. So Jimmy, um, God, fifty-three. No, no, he's old. I'm, I'm, she's older. He told. I mean, okay, let me think. I'm guessing fifty-six, just as a number. Um, it's not. It, we couldn't be off by more than a year or two because he, he's told me his age. Um, I remember. Okay, I remember the birthday that I had in a magazine for Jimmy Hart. That birthday would have made him fifty-nine. So he may be 59, except he called me up and said, I'm not 59, whatever, it was, it was many, many years ago. He wasn't that age. He was, um, I think, 56. I think he was like two or three, 56, 57. Anyway, roughly roughly that era. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's 60s. You know, 60s, they were, you know, the Gentries were a big-time deal. He just doesn't look that old. No, no, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah, he's Anything else? Okay, I'm still here. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. one more quick before I go. Okay, yeah, because um, I hear him claiming that he did a lot of stuff like the Wolfpack music. I really don't believe that, right? I think he paid somebody to do that. I think he did the Wolfpack music. I've heard that. I've heard that too. Yeah, he did. Oh, he he did, did. You know, he he did all Terry Funk's music when Terry Funk used to release records in Japan in the early '80s. Mm-hmm. Kind of um, kind of hip hop. That's why. Yeah, but he's 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 like a. I mean, he's he's real into music, Jimmy Hart. Yeah, he's, he's very close to music, Jimmy. He knows he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering, what about John Johnston? What's I think of his style of production? I don't know. Yeah, I think you have a little help, too, also. Well, everyone, I mean, you got to have help. I mean, it's not like Jimmy's a one-man band doing everything himself, but... Yeah, I kind of figured the guys who are doing the vocals on the DX song, they doing, they helping doing some of the production, too. Um. Maybe Woody. 
The young, yeah, the guys that's um, singing the vocals on DX's um, entrance. The, the, the original guys? I mean, not Run DMC. Not the original guys. Yeah, those original guys that performed at that one pay-per-view? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember them. Yeah, because I think they did the vocals on Chris Jericho's song, too, and Vince McMahon's entrance. They might. I, I, You know, they might. Yeah, I'm kind of having a feeling they um, helping doing it also. Didn't him and Jimmy yeah. Hart work together, too? What? Didn't him and Jimmy Hart work together? John Johnson. John, the, the, J, whatever, the, the guy who does all the WF music, that guy? I forget uh -huh. his name. The, the Johnson? Johnson. I, they may have they may have been together at the end of Jimmy's WF run. I'm not sure if the time I'm not sure how the time frame worked because Jimmy Hart did like all that WF songs like the Paul Roma song and you know a lot of those entrance musics. Yeah. For a Real while American. and then they then they then he left for WCW and then um, the the guy who's in there Johnson came in, uh, but I'm not sure when he first came in. The guy that was in uh, what's what's the movie Beyond the Mat? You ever see him doing the Vader song? Okay, how old is he? You know how old Don Johnson is. No, I don't know anything about him. I just saw him. The only thing I know about him is what I saw in the Beyond the Mat. So I know what he looks like, but as far as uh, how old he is, I don't know. Oh, I got to look at Beyond the Mat. What scene are you on in Beyond the Mat? What? Well, I'm going to look for him. Do they mention it's, it's a scene where uh, they go behind the scenes to the music, and he's actually playing the Vader song on on his guitar and going like, you know, this is how, you know, big Vader, he comes out, mom, 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 and that's how he kind of like try to like explain how he comes up with music for different people. So, oh, okay. I don't know how I, I I don't know that Steve Regal song though. He, they should have made him explain the Steve Regal song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind. That was kind of sloppy right there. Yeah. Okay, we got to get running right now. Okay. Okay. See you later. All right. Before we take another call, I got this email from David Grant who says, "This is for you, Brian." In the September 2000 issue of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, Brian is listed as having worked on March 25th, 2000, in both Washington and British Columbia. Did this really happen? I bet they had the wrong date for a show. On the same and, day. Yeah. It was he probably was, a Friday and Saturday night, so they screwed up the date. Yeah, that's that's what I figured. Okay, so anyway, got that got that out of the way. Let's go to Western Virginia. West, you're next up. Hi guys. Uh, first question for Shannon is: uh, After Kevin Sullivan left and Russo came in, three count disappeared for a while. Did he bring you back because of the criticism? Because of, there wasn't a lot of wrestling, or was that just they were trying some things and you didn't fit into the plans? What was behind that? What What was the question? I can't hear it. It's like... oh, okay, okay. He was just wondering, like when uh, when you were you were on TV every week with Kevin Sullivan, and then you were gone for a while. Do you know the reason that you were brought back? I mean, he was wondering, is it was, were you brought back because people were saying there wasn't enough wrestling on the show? or I mean, um, do you even know why? Did they just call you and say, okay, you're back on TV this Monday? Or, or did they tell, you know, or did you even know you were going to be taken off TV, for that matter? Well, um, you know, I, we just we, we, we got taken off. It wasn't for no kind of punishment or, you know, nothing like that, I was sure of. And it was just more or less, I guess, they were just trying to reconstruct, you know, just trying to put things where they need to be and... You know, we just, we, they, I, they might have been waiting for the right time to bring us back, you know, just for the, I guess just for the right time, but it, it wasn't for no kind of punishment or because we weren't doing our job or nothing like that, or, you know, nothing on that means. Yeah, yeah, we, we, know, yeah, we know it wasn't punishment or anything, because God knows they should punish people for having good matches. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it happened. No, no, I just, I, I figured it was just, you know, you, you know, changing Booker and like, you know, it wasn't, his idea and everything, but we were, do, you, do you know, like, um, as far as being brought back, I mean, were you just kind of told one day, okay, this Monday you're coming back to TV, or, or did it come out something different different than that? Well, um, you know, I spoke, you know, to uh, to the writers over the, uh, you know, over time or whatever that we were off. You know, I wasn't left completely in the dark, and, uh, you know, there was a visual idea that, you know, I wasn't going to be brought back on, so it just won't like, you know, I got caught up saying, hey, you're going to be brought back on tomorrow, and it wasn't a big surprise. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, one more. Uh, in terms of uh, you guys' style of comparing to the Hardy Boys, you guys take a lot of risk. Do uh, you think maybe you have to tone that down considering your age? You, you want a long career. Do you think you're going to have to tone down maybe a little bit? Uh... No. Um, right now, man, you know, I'm feeling real good. Uh, like I said, I, I've been doing this, you know, since I was 15. So um, right now I'm really healthy and, you know, I'm ready to go. I, I think I'm going to be good for at least, you know, at least five more years, hopefully. And um, if, it, if it ever gets to the point where I can't entertain like I do now, you know, I don't, I don't even know if I want to entertain anymore, because that's just I have fun with the style of wrestling I do now. And if I go out there and do any less, then it's just not going to be fun to me anymore. 
Um, do you, as, as far as like, do you, do you feel anything yet as far as like body part stuff or like, you know, aches and pains or, is, or so far, you know, nothing really serious? Nothing really serious. You know, after an 11 day run or whatever, I, I come home and I'm sore, but, you know, you get over that, over, you know, over a few days of being home. But, um, as far as like injuries or anything like that, my knees are still pretty good and, you know, just my shoulders are good. So I'm just, I'm just gonna hang in there for as long as I can. Have you, do you, do you, do you talk a lot to Matt and Jeff Hardy still? Yes, about every day. Um, oh, really? Okay. How are, you know, because um, they've been on the road now for a couple of years with WWF. And, I mean, I know that they did actually, like, longer matches before they even went to WWF. But now it's, you know, I mean, they're they're doing a pretty hard schedule and a lot of the tour, you know, a lot of traveling and everything. I mean, how, you know, have they talked to you about, like, you know, we're a couple of years older than you and, uh, you know, like, we're starting to feel it? Or do they just not, are they just pretty much the same attitude that you have right now? Uh, the same attitude, you know, it's just like, I mean, we see each other because, you know, we live, we're, we're basically neighbors. We live a mile apart or whatever. We, and, uh, you know, whenever we talk or whatever, we're all, right now, we're all pretty healthy. We're just feeling soreness. And, I don't know, it's just, I guess we all agree, hopefully, on the same thing. We're just going to, we can go as long as we can because, we, you know, we we just love it. We love the business. Now, now Shane Helms and you, uh, do you was, 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 is his story pretty much the same as yours that you grew, you guys all grew up together? No, I didn't. Or did, or did he come from somewhere else? He he started working with us at Omega. Whenever we, uh, whenever Matt started up the Omega promotion here in the Carolina, or whatever, um, we started we st- was working that was doing that maybe uh, once or twice a month, and um, that's how we we met Shane through the independent scene or whatever, and uh, Matt brought him on to some of our shows. That's how we met. And you guys, and, and then you, you and you and him. Do you work a lot with uh, Christian York and Joey Matthews on the independent scene before? Yeah, uh, yeah. Before on the independent scene, I did. Um, before I got signed or whatever. Whenever everybody was on the end, you know, doing independence, we we all worked together a lot. And when you when you got signed, was it pretty much something where were you and uh, and Shane Helms like pretty much, you know, put together since you kind of came from the same background? I mean, I guess then you worked as a tag team on the independent level before you came to WCW, or did? Or was that more something like you were going your, you were, I say going your separate ways, but you were doing your own thing, and then Jimmy Hart just came up, by, you know, with this idea of putting you two with uh, with Evan Courageous. Yeah, um, yeah, well, on the independent scene or whatever, was doing our own thing. Um, I was wrestling as Kid Dynamo on the independent scene, and then um, I went to Nashville, and I was working out there as uh, the Dynamo Shannon Moore, and um, Shane, he was doing the serial thrillers thing with. Uh, Mike Maverick, which is in WWF also, and um, he, uh, it just went from there. Whenever um, I got connections with WCW or whatever, I took Shane down, and uh, we did, that's who I took to do my tryout match with, and uh, he, he got signed along with me after our tryout match. Wes, anything more? Uh, yeah, one more. Uh, in terms of uh, independence, who would uh, Shannon like to see come into WCW, some good workers that need a break? What was the question? Um, are there guys that you met in the independent scene who you think you know could come to WCW or WWF that you'd like to see come in? Man, there's um, to be honest with you, there's so much talent on the independent scene, man. I wish, I, I wish that everybody that's out there that's working as hard as they do could get a break. It's just um, you know, in particular, people that I, that I wish could you know be right there with me would be you know um like Joey Matthews and Christian York they actually were signed with WCW and got got their release um I, you know I wish they were there with me um you know Champagne Marty Garner I always thought you know he was good he he was along with us through the uh, mega days on the independent scene and you know there's just there's so much talent out there just waiting for a break and it's just you know it's just a matter of who who gets it and who don't so much so much just depending on luck yeah you know the right day, the, the right you know the right signing and the right time and then sort of like the right booker at the right time who just puts you on TV and and says I'm going to give you a chance and things like that. Yeah. When, now when you were at the, when you were at the power plant before starting with WCW um, on TV, who were some of the were a lot of the guys like uh, Mark Jindrak and Sean O'Hare were they were they in there then or was they would they come later? Yes, they were they were there then. They had been there before we went. Now we were we were down at the power plant probably two to three weeks something like that. We were down there. Not long at all, and uh, Jimmy Hart had to. That's whenever we went down and recorded our first song was, you know, around that time. So um, after we recorded the song, we were pretty much done with the power plant deal. Hmm. Any, anybody? So 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 who, who was in, who was in there at the time? Um, that this that uh, Trump Palumbo must have been there too as well. Um. Yeah. Mark, like you said, them two guys. Um. 
Let me see here. Who else was there? Kid Romeo was there. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, Kid Romeo, he's, he's good. He, he is. He, um, who else was kind of thing? Who else was there? Um, Chuck Palumbo, he was there. Let me see. He, he, he's on TV now. Um, there, there's a few more guys on there. I know, uh, one of them was Sonny. He, he was there. The, uh, you probably seen him on the Saturday night taping some. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember who else was there. But yeah, there, there was quite a few guys there when they were there. You know what I want to find out is whatever happened to that guy? Remember the guy Brian with the uh, the guy that they met at the Arnold Classic with and Paul Orndorff was flying oh, all over. Arms? him? Yeah, Jacob Strauss I think was his name or J Big Jake, whatever Maybe his name was. Work. What? Oh, I heard he was horrendous. He gave up immediately. Yeah, but my God, I, what a. What a freaky looking person! How, how, who, who was it? I think his name was Jacob Strauss. Or he was—he was this guy. He had like these incredibly ridiculous looking arms. I mean, they were like—I mean, they made Scott Steiner's look, arms look, look look small, and they were—they put like two vignettes of him on on Nitro mm -hmm. when they first signed him, and then we never heard about him again. Oh really? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know, like, I, I heard about him being down there, and uh, I don't know where he's at now. I don't know if he's still doing anything with WCW or not. Yeah, I don't even know if he's still if he's still around. We never heard his name again. I want to get to a couple of emails. This is from Randy Rio who says, the uncensored it was the uncensored card in March that did the point one three. Super Brawl did a point one five. And we're talking about bad buy rates for pay per views. Uh, let's see. Do you think Vince Russo has regrets about leaving a secure position in the WF for all this crap and uncertainty that's in WCW? From what I know, nobody tried to undermine him and more or less let him do his job in the WF, but in WCW, everyone has a gripe about him or wants him out of his job or he just gets frustrated, whereas in the WF, it was likely the opposite. Well, he, he was does. obviously frustrated. What? Oh, no, you go ahead, Brian. I was going to say, if he does, he will never tell anybody. Well, he, he must have been frustrated in WF or he wouldn't have left. I mean, that's that's the reality of it. Yeah. Um, the the backstage as far as companies there are the big difference is that WCW has no leader and it, uh, whereas WWF has Vince McMahon but if you take that out of the picture the it's it's not all that different you know yeah. um, I mean it's just, it's just the what, what wrestling breeds I guess uh, let's see uh, I was wondering what was up with the Triple Crown and tag team titles in all Japan. Are Kawada and Tawai going to drop the belts? Uh, no, I don't think so. Is Kawada versus Williams triple crown match? I don't even know. That hasn't even been announced officially yet. Uh, what titles will, if any, will Noah be using? Noah's the Misawa's group's theoretical name. Um, I think it's all too too soon. No one really knows the answers. Nothing's been said. Uh, do you think Kurt Angle will ever become a world-class worker? Right now, almost three-quarters of his match is punching and kicking. He's pretty old for a rookie, but working with Benoit, Jericho, Guerrero, influence him will basically stay as good as he is now. Well, considering he's only been in the business for about a year and a half, um, I think he'll improve. I think he'll improve a lot. What do you think, Brian? Well, I mean, I think look at how much he's learned so far. I mean, obviously he's the kind of guy that's going to learn quickly, and if he's in there working with guys that are awesome, he's going to learn something every single match he does. Uh, this is from Kevin Kerr, who says, Some people think the WF moving to TNN will cause their ratings to go down, but I want to know why. TNN is not only available in the United States, but also in Canada. Wouldn't the added viewers each Monday from Canada cause the ratings to increase rather than decrease? No, because the ratings are, what's the word I'm looking for? The ratings on cable are a percentage of the people who have the availability, of the homes that have the availability to see the, pro the program, watching the program. So if you add homes in Canada, the percentage will not change. I mean, the number that you divide it by will change, but the rating is a percentage of the number of people watching by the number of people, or the number of the number of homes that are watching, divided by the number of homes who can watch. So, so more or less homes being available does not affect the rating whatsoever. Okay. I hope everybody understood that because I didn't understand a single word you said. Okay. This is how you determine the rating. Okay. You take. <laughs> I'm sure everyone else understood. I'm just a math idiot. Okay. You take the number. Okay. Anyway, WF stock closed at 19, 15, 16, so it was up. Wow. Was up, up pretty good. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Wow. This is a big one. It's from ProWrestlingTorch.com. Uh, David Schwartz tells ProWrestlingTorch.com that as of today, TNN has notified ECW that they're that but per terms of the agreement the network is terminating the telecast okay they're actually okay but they're okay telecast for september 22nd so that basically confirms what we already knew okay quote oh listen to this one 
Quote, ECW has failed to meet some of the criteria of the agreement, including ratings performance targets, said Schwartz. We appreciate the efforts ECW and Paul Heyman have made to bring wrestling fans to TNN. Um, so they they are being ca- they're being can we know why they're being canceled. Um, so anyway, they're being canceled. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, USA announced they're going to do movies. Uh, okay. Uh, so in other words, today things don't look good. For ECW, at this moment they don't look good. No. Uh, let's see. I was wondering if you caught tonight with Tavis smiling. I did not see that. Did you see that? I'm sure you didn't either, Brian. Did you? The I BET heard about show? the deal. But I didn't yeah, see. Booker T, Ernest Miller, and Paisley. Yeah. I, I talked to someone who told me it wasn't worth going out of my way to see, so I didn't go out of my way to see it. Yeah. They just basically said, you know, they talked about the popularity of blacks in pro wrestling, but did not mention the racial discrimination, uh, discrimination lawsuit in WCW. Okay. So. okay. This is uh, Garen Shea, who says Jimmy Hart is 57. So, anyway. Birthday, January 1, 1943. That sounds right. Um that 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 number that that year sounds right because I think because he he had one time had told me when his birthday was and I remember it was I remember it was January first and I thought it was in forty one or and and um, and he told me that he was actually younger than that by two years so anyway, okay let's go to Tim in Florida Tim you're next up to Shannon Moore uh yes Dave I got two questions for you okay uh yes. Um, as you know, Sunday we were scheduled to have an, uh, for the first time in the United States an exploding rematch between Funk and Anita. And I mm-hmm. heard that um, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission stepped in. I don't know if this is true, but if it is, do you know if we will? Uh, do you think we will ever have something like this in the United States? I, I, I actually talked to the commission, and while it is true they stepped in, the reason it was canceled had nothing to do with the content of the show. Um, they the promoters never got a promoter's license. So it was like they will not regulate content of the show. Although there is a Pennsylvania law, okay, there is a law in the books in Pennsylvania that you are not allowed to uh, slice your forehead with a razor blade in a professional wrestling show, which is obviously a law that is violated on every single ECW show in the state and a lot of other shows. But that is, there are no content regulations, which means if if those promoters had had taken out promoter's licenses, they would not have stepped in and stopped the show. But the fact that they didn't uh, pretty much doomed them. So so it, it was. It was technically shut down for that reason. The fact that they, as far as I know, they ran a show that in, in New Jersey that same day, but they, they told the Japanese and Terry Funk not to come because the show was canceled. To me, says that the real story is is that they had no advance and they wanted and they didn't want to lose it. You know, they wanted to save money at that point. But I don't, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask the people. You know, that's how it reads to me looking at it from the outside. So do you think we'll ever see anything like that though? In the United States? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure. We, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. It's just I'm, I'm shocked we haven't seen it. I'm shocked we haven't seen it already. I mean, Paul Heyman tried to do it once or twice. It didn't really work out that well, from what I understand. But they brought those explosives in. Um, you know, someday WWF or WCW is going to do it. They, you know, I, just, I, I don't. You know, someone's going to do it. It's it's just inevitable as to when. And um, with the Rock win the title, I heard he may do with the Undertaker going into the next pay per view and uh, fully loaded. But uh, do you think he will uh, defend the title against the Undertaker? Will it be a four-way with Jericho, Angle, and Triple H? God, they just did. I hate those kind of matches. Um, I hate the thought of Rock and Undertaker. <laughs> that's true. That's true. If they, if they have those guys in there, you know, at least they could, uh, you know, make make the fact that Undertaker's not that mobile anymore, you know, more compatible. I, I don't I don't know what the main event is on the next pay per view. I haven't I haven't heard. Um, I mean, going into this pay-per-view, it seemed to me real likely they were going with Rock and Undertaker on the following pay-per-view, but the TV Monday and Tuesday uh, was not that focused in that direction, at least from what I saw. So, I don't know. I could see they, they, they were supposed to do something with Hunter and, and Jericho. I know that, and I don't know if that's what they're going to do or not. Oh, yeah, but, but I, I think that they may do something with Hunter and Angle, maybe... Um, maybe at the July pay-per-view um, with, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how they're going to do it, though, but I heard that yeah. it's going to be a three-way Monday night between uh, Rock and two uh, two guys, but I don't, that's every, you can hear anything on the Internet, you know what I mean? Yeah, I and, know. I, I know. Um, let's see, it's Thursday today. Usually they get around to starting writing TV Thursday, so anything you hear probably before Thursday, 
as far as what's going to be on TV is certainly premature in most cases. Um, since if you heard it today, I mean, there's a chance it leaked out. Although, you know, eight times out of ten, that kind of information ends up being wrong anyway. Yeah. And, and one more thing. I got a question for Shannon. Is, is he there? Yeah. Shannon, um, and I, I um, like your uh, three-count thing that you guys got going on with uh, Shane and um, Evan. What do you think, the, and, um, and I believe that the fans like it too, what do you think, though, that WCW has to do to turn around and um, bring the ratings up? And I think that you guys will um, be a big part of it. Um, uh, as far as that goes, I just think the might just stay in control. Uh, you know, that's what it all boils down to. Stay in control and be given authority to actually get things done. Yeah. If you, um, I mean, if you got an army and they keep switching leaders of the army, you know, the army's not going to be doing too good. <laughs> I think, uh, I think that, uh, they, they most definitely, I think, I think, you know, if Bischoff just stays in there, I think things are going to, things will get, get better, definitely. Anything else, Tim? Uh, no, I didn't hear what he said. What, what did he say? To oh, you? oh, he just said he just said basically that they needed to have a, a leader who who stays in control. You know, not changing the leader constantly. Yeah. So uh, speaking about that, what do you what do you think Rooster is going to stay or what, Dave? Rumor rumor has it that he's going to be back and he's going to be back maybe as early as Monday. But everyone seems to be talking like he's he's on his way back. All right. Well, thanks a lot very much. Okay. Okay. Shannon, right. who does you guys' choreography? Do what? The uh, choreography, your dance and everything. For our dance? Um, actually, um, the Nitro Girls, they've been helping us out. Huh. Hmm. There's something I was about to ask about uh, about that deal. Um, is there any, you know, you, you've been wrestling mainly uh, the Young Dragons. Is there anyone else that, uh, you know, you, you want to break off and start wrestling, uh, you know, other people as, as a regular three-man type thing? Um, I'd love to do something with the field, the animals, just because you know, this, you know, Ray breaking into the breaking into WCW or whatever, actually bringing out the cruiserweight division, and uh, I'd like to work with Billy Kidman, so you know, those guys. I think you know that I think it'd be fun because they're the ones that I was watching on TV before I was actually there, so it, it'd be fun to uh, to work with them. Do you think that that uh, that they may do something with a cruiserweight title like they used to do maybe three years ago when it actually meant something? I, I hope so. I, I do. I think I think that's one thing that that WCW's got, you know, and, and has had always had is the uh, the cruiserweight title and the cruiserweight division. There's a lot of talent there that they can work with. It's just a matter of you know what, what they want to put into it or not. Um, let's go to Mike in Florida. Mike, you're next. Hello. Up. Hello, Dave. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dave. This is Dave. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't hear you for a minute. Now, I got a couple of questions. Uh, first off, I want to know if Kimberly's really gone and she fired, get fired, or quit, or what? Brian, do you know the exact? I mean, I actually had someone explain to me this morning what the status was, and it was, it sounded to be, she's not quit, mm -hmm. but she's not coming back right now, and that everyone's trying to smooth things out for her to come back at right. some point in time. You know, maybe when Paige comes back, uh -huh. she'll come back. What about uh, also Luger and Elizabeth? Is that a shoot or a work, or what, what's going on? I think it's a shoot. Uh, so you don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, what I want to say is, it's like, like, like everything in WCW, you have to be suspicious of, yeah. okay? Yeah, since the um, Pillman shoot, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just it, because Eric's in charge. Yeah. You know, because, you know, it's not necessarily, the, the, because, well, Eric was part of the Pillman thing, but Eric doesn't even realize to this day that the Pillman thing was the work, was mainly a work on Eric. But, um, <laughs> but Eric thinks he was, he was, you know, involved with the work, and it yeah. was like this, you know, his, one of his great accomplishments, right. although he never heard, drew a dime. Yeah, I heard that but, Tom Zink said that Pillman and Sullivan really had heat. What do you think about uh, it? Is that true? Uh, did they have heat? Um, I'll tell you when they had heat, okay? It, they had heat because Pillman didn't work the one pay-per-view. Remember he had a, the, um, the, the really horrible match where they had the two guys against the eight guys in the three-decker cage? Right. Brian Pillman was supposed to be in that one, uh -huh. and Brian Pillman had had some doctor's note. I mean, he actually had a throat operation, okay? Uh -huh. 
Okay, he could have worked the show, right. but he had, an, he had a note that he shouldn't work the show. And he shouldn't have worked the show, but normally if you were in the main event of a pay-per-view and you were a wrestler in that situation, you would have worked the show. So they were really pressuring him, you know, to work, to work, and he was going, I got a doctor's note. And, I mean, I can tell you this from, I talked to Brian Pillman probably four times a week during that period, and he was over and over again right. beforehand is like, yeah, you know, like, I, I mean, I shouldn't work the show. Of course, I could work the show. It's the main event of a pay-per-view, but it's going to be the absolute worst match of all time, and I don't want to be in it, which he was right about. That was one of the worst matches ever. Um, I, as far as heat with Kevin, you know, him and Kevin were involved in that. You know, they were working everything together, but right. they did have heat after the, the quote, uh, work, shoot, you know, work, shoot stuff. Right. Where they had the heat was when he didn't, when Kevin was the booker at that point, and Kevin wanted him to work that one pay-per-view, and he he kept saying no. Right. He's he's his throat hurts, mm -hmm. and then uh, or or you know he couldn't do it, and Kevin thought the whole thing was a work, and they checked with the doctor, and they found out he really did have the operation. Right. But and have... then when then when Pillman left to go to WWF when he signed the WWF contract, then they then he had heat with Sullivan, I think, on that one because here Sullivan was working this big angle, and there's Brian, and he's gone again. Right. But what about the angle that he pulled, you know, the whole angle? There was no heat involved, or, you know? Uh, in that one, and that was, the, the stuff on TV, no, there was no heat at all. That was all, that was all their work, you know, that, sure. that uh, Kevin, Kevin Sullivan, Eric yeah. Bischoff, and, um, They worked the boys, too, huh? They totally worked, they, 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 they totally tried to work the boys, yeah. And, and, and I think, for a while there, everyone was fooled, and then yeah. about a week or two later, everyone right. figured it out, and they still yeah. kept trying to work them anyway. Yeah. And also another question about Elizabeth. Is she really pregnant? That's what I heard. That's why she's off. No, I sure have not heard that, Brian. You hear anything uh, like that? I have heard nothing like that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that that, that one doesn't yeah. sound right. Thanks, man. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's go, to Jesse in Indiana or Jason in Indiana. Hey, Dave. Hey. Hey. Um. Uh, some questions for you. Um. First of all, um, with ECW. Do you think there's, uh, I just uh, read your report on the website there about how uh, USA is, is going to be showing movies on Monday, Monday night. Um, do you think there's a chance that ECW could be like a, in a game of musical chairs, could be left without a chair? Absolutely chance, yes. Yeah, there's definitely that chance. Because it seems like unless Fox steps up, you know, who, who can they go to, you know? And they would be in the same situation as we were uh, as we were seeing them a year ago with just hardcore TV. There's, you know, there's a lot of these cable networks out there, mm -hmm. you know, like FXs and, I mean, just things that may want something that has proven it can get a consistent 0.8. Right. You know, for some of those networks, an 0.8, even like, you know, even national network right now, 0.8 is not a bad number. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, let me see. I, I mean, I, 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 you know, whatever's going to happen, I think is going to go down within the, within the next week, probably, maybe even the next two or three days. But it's like anything, you know, they could come out looking real bad. They could come out looking real good. And, and I don't really, you know, until they've had their meeting with USA mm -hmm. and they know what that's all about, you know, they're, obviously that's the prime choice. And until they're turned down by USA, if right. that were to happen, they'd be foolish to go headlong in any other discussion. So it's it's just too early to really know. And the other, and um, I'm wondering is you know could it be that also ECW is detracting away is because people are looking and saying okay they're not as successful as WWF or WCW as far as the ratings here and you know you can argue you know could TNN promotion and stuff like that so we're going to have to invest more in this product so this is not just you know we have to prop up this product more than we would be like buying a regular television series from another company, you know. Or with the WWF, you knew you were getting programming. They were handling the programming. We just had to fill out the space in our uh, schedule here to... Uh, to oh, you mean for USA? Yeah, but USA is not going to have to pay, you know, ECW the money they were paying WWF. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as rights fees to keep, you know, to keep them. But, yeah, they were going to have to... I mean, if they're going to get on USA, they're going to have to get money for production, or else they're going to have that. They're going to have to, because they, they can't put what they put on TNN on USA. It will not fly. It just no one will accept it. So you know, USA. That's part of what USA has to. You know, part of what USA is looking at. And I don't know. Does USA want to go with? The number three wrestling company, when in their minds they're the number one cable network, right. or do they, or do they want to go in there and go with this attitude that hey, 
we made the WWF, and you know we can we can start this small company from scratch and and make them. I mean, I I, I you know I don't know where their heads at. No one's talked to Barry Diller, and it's clearly going to be Barry Diller's call all the way on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, two other quick uh, uh, comments. Um, the other um, I also read on your report as far as um, now there's griping in the, in the WWF uh, bathroom about. Uh, Slots being basically frozen now, you know, frozen, frozen in place. There's uh, not as much upward mobility. Um, do you see that in the next few years? I, I, I have to think that you've got this big mid card or lower card section in the WWF of people like Elo Brown and you know Perry Saturn and you know people who are not being used, you know. Um, and you only see them on Sunday Night Heat or Jack or Metal, whatever. And um, I, I have to feel that sooner or later there's going to be some migration towards WCW. Um, you know, when contracts are up, uh, you know, just, again, it depends on... I don't think anyone wants to go from WWF to WCW right now because WCW right. is the more uncertain of the two. But three years from now, I mean, who knows? I mean, look at... Even look, one look, year look back. Now. Look back, yeah. You know, look back two years ago or three years ago. Right. I mean, everybody was scared to death. The WF might not even be in business, and WCW was going to take it all. I mean, this business changes so so fast. Because I'm wondering, that, like people, they're looking at like like Jeff Jarrett. You know, granted, he's you know the you know the the number one guy, I guess, or you know supposedly the number one guy in the uh, in the in the second uh, the second organization. But he's probably making more money now than, and you know, he has more opportunities as being, you know, on as far as exposure than he did at, 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 um, when he was with the WWF. Well, it depends on how you look at exposure, because I mean, he's the champion, mm-hmm. but he's the champion at a time where they're trying a two-three right. for a quarter hour or something. Whereas some guy like D'Lo Brown, who usually is on Heat or Jack or whatever, ends right. up on Raw and you know gets a five-a quarter, a quarter into six. I mean. That's but, I mean, more exposure there to me. You know, but it's just, I don't know. I guess you could say it's equal, or but it just seems like, I mean, he was on Raw this last time, and, you know, he was like an afterthought. He and Perry Saturn were an afterthought in that battle royal. Yeah, tag team thing, yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, okay. it all depends on, I think, the guy. Okay, um, um, we, we, got, uh, we got, to, got one real quick comment because we got to take a break. We're okay, actually, we're the other the real thing is... Uh, is the, with the Rock and his new movie, I, I think it's a real great thing because that guy um, Joe Roth is one of the. He's the guy that led uh, Disney to the biggest market share, biggest box office in the last few years. So he's really the Rock star. You can tell has really gone up in Hollywood over there. I mean, to be involved with uh, Pete, um, Joe Roth is, is is big time. Here's today's question: What WWF Tag Team Championship team was actually first a Tag Team Championship team in Japan? Okay, so first two. Uh, get that. Also, I want to make mention that tomorrow on the show we will have a 1960s wrestling legend, 60s and 70s, Gene Kniski from Blaine, Washington, Vancouver, BC area, uh, known as uh, I think he was the first one, first wrestler to go by the name of Canada's Greatest Athlete before. Before Mike Sharp. And uh, then uh, next week, um, of course, Monday we will be off. Uh, Tuesday will be a Wrestling Observer Marathon. So, like, all day long, tapes of uh, various and sundry shows. Wednesday we will be back. We'll have, what? 15 consecutive hours. From when to when, Al? Okay. Do you know some of the shows that are some of the guests that will be uh, some yeah. of the tapes? Uh, Edge, Christian. Um, I believe Bad News Allen is one of them. It's basically oh, the most one. recent shows that we've had in the last couple of weeks uh, will be on, but it'll be 15 hours long. 15 hours long. That is scary. Um, and we're off by Monday. the way, what? Tuesday. Off Monday? Off Monday, too, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Monday's just an off day. What, what's going on on Monday? Is, what's, is anything we're just going to be on, on an archive program uh, on Monday, like a, you know, like just like a regular day schedule. But on Tuesday, it'll be 15 hours of Wrestling Observer Live, and I want to know if somebody's going to listen to all 15 hours of it. Well, now somebody will for sure. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if, if somebody listens to all 15 hours, okay, and they have to prove it now, they have to somehow they now, have how can to you, prove it by, uh, I don't know, how can you as, do- as the segments are going on, send an email or whatever, we'll send them an Iyata t-shirt. That's fair. That's real fair. That's too fair. Okay. Um... But by the way, before we get going, oh, but let me just figure finish. Okay, um, 
Okay, Wednesday we're going to have Jeff Merrick. Next Wednesday from Live Audio Wrestling. Thursday will be Jackie Fargo. And then Friday will be Steve <laughs> Kern. <laughs> Jackie Fargo. That's going to be interesting. Do By the way, um, disciples coming on anytime soon? No, 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 no sin in the disciples. Yeah, I don't think that they're. I'm, I'm hoping they don't make it to the WWF because <laughs> then they're probably going to end up being on again. Oh boy, that was that was definitely different. Um, and uh, before we go on, I, I I don't know. To me, I I loved yesterday's show. Just want to say that. I don't know, no one wants to say. No one wants to agree with me on that one. That okay, was a good show. Sorry. I mean, I just thought Ted DiBiase was awesome. I really did. And you did a good I just, job. Yeah, I, I mean, it, I think we just scratched the surface with him. He he had so many good stories. When that show was over, I was thinking about so many different things that we didn't even touch. So he had a long, he had a long career, really good speaker. So I got to kick out of that show. Uh, it's from Kevin Donlin, who says, Has the a, AAA EMLL show been rescheduled since soccer preempted the show last Tuesday? Looking forward to watching the show. Uh, isn't it amazing how cutting edge the product can be considering the cultural, the culture's pervasive lethargy? Um, that show, I mean, I don't, okay, the show was preempted for soccer. It's supposed to air, I think, Saturday at 1.30 Eastern time. There was supposed to be a Lucha Libre show as well as in the, the regular slot that's coming Tuesday night. But I was told that the tape that they sent from Mexico, from the Univision, or not Univision, what's the, Televisa sent to Galavision, uh, was not a tape of that big show. It was a tape of a, a, tr a AAA show and an EMLL show. So I don't know if that show's ever going to air. And hope, if anyone knows when it's going to air, let us know. But I've been in contact with people who are, you know, pretty close to um, Galavision and who follow this, you know, Lucha Libre religiously, and they don't know when the show is going to air. That, now, is there that a reason show. why the wrong tape was sent? Was it like a screw up or? I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it was a screw up or if maybe. Um, um, Televisa is just like wanting, you know, extra money because it's an extra big show, and maybe they didn't want to send extra money. Hmm. That was just a theory someone threw at me that was close to the situation, so I, I actually don't know. And then he says, uh, let's see, can Misawa eclipse all Japan like Baba did in the 70s? As banged up as Misawa and Kobashi are, their hourglass is waning to establish NOAA. Japan provides a greater margin of error with all the groups in the country. The country supports, but they'll need to elevate guys quick. Uh, and then he says, quality effort making the hazy tangible with the headline pay-per-view revenue analysis. Was the breakdown between the temperature of the promotion and the performers comprehensive enough? Well, it's never 100% comprehensive enough, but I think, well, this is just something that I did in The Observer a week ago, um, you know, with a pay-per-view analysis of all the main events from 95 till the present. I think that if you look at the year 90, 99 and the year 2000, it's pretty well um, the the how hot the promotion is at the time is pretty well factored in pretty well and what those numbers are is pretty much you know like uh the wrestlers that look good drew substantially above what shows would have drawn without them in most cases and I, and the cases that don't exactly fit that like the big show i explain why well i think how uh, hot a company is has a lot to do with who's on top too so i you yeah yeah I, I, I see cases, obviously but yeah yeah um so anyway, he was he's going like my take is promotions can ride waves and cre crediting individuals is tough whether hot or cold. Absolutely, they're you know like right now the WWF, if they put on a, a pay per view, but but if, you know if you look at like last year, when they put on the one you know the one pay per view with a real week main event, I mean it, granted it still did like a .85 buy rate, which is which is not bad, but it did you know substantially less than when you had like Steve Austin against The Rock, you know even if it had been a, you know or, or you know you know what I mean when you have the two top guys against each other, they draw above the company average, and it's because they're the two top guys. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, but you're right, you know I mean like a lot of a lot of the success, the baseline success of WWF, was also due to Steve Austin and The Rock. So. Uh, let's go to Chris in Massachusetts. Chris, what's going on? How you doing? I just want to say great show. Got Thank a you. actually two questions. First question is uh, your opinion. Who do you see in the WWF as, uh, as far as the, the young and new talent that has the most uh, momentum into moving up? Like you know, people like Test or Albert. Uh, who do you think has the most uh, potential on that? I mean, Angle's, uh, Angle's the obvious one to me. I don't know what. Um, I, was Shen, say, I, I was gonna say outside of Angle though. Shannon, Shannon, you got any thoughts on that? Do what? What was this? Do you have any thoughts? As far as guys in the WWF that have uh, the most talent to uh, move up a notch, you know, some of the newer guys in the company. Um, uh, the Dump. Um, yeah, you know those guys better than I do, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Those, those guys, that, once, once they start getting on TV and stuff, I think, I think those guys are going to move up pretty quick. They, they're really talented guys. Um, Kurt Angle, I think, 
you know, I think there's a, a big future for him, too. He's got a lot of talent, I see. Um, he, uh, like you said earlier, whatever, he's a quick learner. It seems to be, I think, you know, he'll be one of the top guys. And, What's the news uh, on Albert? I don't know. It's just, uh, I mean, everybody, everybody in the top two organizations, they're there for a reason. And uh, if they're going to be used right, I feel like anybody can be on top. That's there because most of the guys have got talent. What, uh, Brian? What, Brian? What do you? Wait, okay, is, wait. You got any thoughts on on, on Prince Albert before I talk about him? I just don't see. I mean, Albert's like a a real big guy, and he seems like he's agile and everything like that. But I don't see a huge upside with him and Ted because I mean they put him with Trish Stratus and it really didn't help him. And uh, you know, Ted's just been kind of floundering. So maybe down the road, but right now I just don't see much. I think with Test is he was pushed. He was pushed too soon, and now he's kind of feeling the effects of it now. Right. Um, I think if he was brought along slowly, because if you look at him, with you know he's not bad, um, and and with his size and his look, you know he he has the like Helmsley, you know he's got that kind of look where you would look at him and go aha, you know this is a future main eventer, and he may very well turn out to be, but um, you know he, he he was pushed real quick, and the people didn't really get behind it. Albert to me is like so much a guy who. Is from the wrong. He's just in the wrong era. If right. that guy was around in the '70s with his size and his agility, he would have been, you know, a, a big, big time territorial top heel every everywhere he went. And the problem is now is there's so many big guys in the WWF that a guy of his size doesn't even get over as being a big guy because you've got Undertaker, you've got Kane, you've got Big Show. Those guys are like way bigger than him, so he can't be this big monster. And he's not. He doesn't have anything special everywhere else other than he's a big guy who's agile. So it's like and the thing is, you know, he can't like, be a big, a big scary monster against the headliners. I mean, he could be huge when he's in there with the Hardys because he dwarfs them and destroys them and everything like that. But I mean, if you put him in there with Helmsley, Helmsley's a real tall guy too. So is Rock. And you know, how do you move into the upper echelon if you're a big guy and everyone else is big and big as your gimmick? Right. Yeah, yeah. You, you you can't get a, you know look at I mean, I think the Big Show is a perfect example. Is that you know, that's a guy who you would think his gimmick would be being big and, and, and all that, and yet when he went to WWF, once he started going in there with Undertaker and Kane, and he was only, you know, because they were in the lifts and the boots and this and that, I mean, he's only a couple inches taller, he couldn't, he really didn't get over as being a monster either at all. I mean, because he, he's not a monster in that in that promotion, you know, even as big as he is. And, and if he can't be a monster, yeah, nobody I mean, can be. They don't really him. push him as being a monster anyway, because it's always like, this guy's big, so let's put him in a match with someone else who's big, like Kane. So, you know, he's not that much bigger than Yeah. My, my second I think, I think he... I, uh, go, go, Chris, go ahead. I was going to... I'm just sorry to cut you off. The uh, other thing is, I read today about Hogan's supposed Fox deal. If you knew anything about that. Well, he certainly talked about it. Has he said anything new today? It just said that basically that uh, the next, you know, pay-per-view, it could be his retirement. and then he's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was from last week, yeah. He um, had some sort of talent contract. Um, oh, his uh, yeah, $150 million dollar talent contract? Yeah. 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 When WCW was like at its peak and everyone was making a lot of money, I swear they only spent like $20 million on payroll, right? Uh, their top year was $38 million on payroll. Oh, was it $38 million? Okay, 30... no, that's not $150 million, though. <laughs> no, no. For $150 million, you can have an entire... Ro- $10 million, and then everyone the... else will get the remaining forty. For 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 150 million dollars, you can get the entire payroll of WWF, WCW, ECW, All Japan, and New Japan all at once. Oh God! All righty, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is from Scott in Maine, who says it's been rumored that ESPN2 wants ECW and has contacted them with Paul negotiating with them. I, I have not heard that. Um, I mean, it could have broken. I, I mean, I, what I will say is I've been in uh, up until. Two days ago, I was in real close contact with Paul Heyman, and ESPN2 was never mentioned to me. Not, you know, I mean, he doesn't tell me everything, but usually big things he doesn't keep from me either. So, I don't know. Um, you know, but again, in the, la- you know, in the last two days, everything has changed because once that court case came, everyone's going to come out of the woodwork. I mean, I, ESPN's been real negative about wrestling, though, historically. Um, they At the beginning when wrestling in the 80s, when wrestling got real big, they were, like, totally negative. Then then all of a sudden, um, the WWF got so big that they wanted the WWF, and it is little known. But ESPN and the WWF actually, and I'm thinking this is in, I, I'm trying to remember the year this would be, they had a verbal agreement that was negotiated by Jim Barnett 
that they were going to jump from USA to ESPN, and then uh, Vince McMahon made the deal with USA, and, and ESPN was real, real mad about it. And then ESPN ended up going with um, AWA uh, above. The, remember, this big thing with AWA and, um, and Mid-South were the two big candidates, and they thought that Mid-South was too regional. And AWA had Sergeant Slaughter, and everyone in Bristol, Connecticut knew him, and no one knew Jim Duggan, although UWF or, or Mid-South in those days had a far superior product and would have been much more successful on that station, but ESPN made the wrong move. And then they carried that in world class for years, and then they dropped all wrestling again. So, anyway, I don't know what that all was leading to. But, <laughs> but it was an interesting story. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. This is uh, from Ron North for Shannon. Uh, Shannon, uh, this is, he says, uh, do you think that... Uh, What's what's your opinion as far as Terry Taylor versus Vince Russo? And also, he wanted to tell you that uh, the three count Young Dragons matches are the best matches he's seen in WCW in a long time. Thanks. Um, for, now, what was the question as far as Terry Taylor and Russo? C comparing uh, Terry Taylor and Vince Russo. Um, you you weren't really around directly under Russo that much because actually got back on TV right when he took his, did this latest hiatus. Yeah, um, you know, um, just for the time being that Russo's there, you know, he's got his good qualities. The same with Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor, he's, he's got his qualities, too. I mean, you know, both of them together, I think, can, you know, definitely be a benefit. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, everybody working together now. And everybody wanting to work together. And uh, let's get to a couple of these emails here. Uh, why do you think WCW is not having Eric Bischoff write television since Time Warner wants more wrestling on the product? I don't really think Time Warner really cares what's what the content of the show is as long as it draws ratings. It's not, you know, the whole thing of like more wrestling and more um, or more non-wrestling segments. I, I whenever I hear those arguments, I kind of like laugh because it's like whatever you can make the show good. Uh, that's too simple. Okay, good wrestling is better than bad anything else. Good vignettes is better than bad wrestling. It's a question of good product, and it doesn't matter if it's 60% wrestling or 35% wrestling. It's it's like, you know, it's not a formula like, uh, oh, there's too much wrestling on the show, therefore it won't get a good rating, or there's too little wrestling on the show, therefore it won't get a good rating. It's like, either it's it's like that's that's analyzing things too deep. I mean, the the thing is, if you've got a good show for a lot of weeks in a row, eventually people are going to pick up and, and, and they're going to watch your show. If you've got a bad show for a whole bunch of weeks in a row, your rating is eventually going to go down because people are going to figure out, you know, I'm sitting there watching this bad TV week after week. And that's that's how ratings work. Yeah, but so. I remember back when, like, Raw had, you know, 30 minutes of wrestling on a two-hour show and the rest was vignettes and everything. And, I mean, a lot of those were good, but I still don't think it was a good a TV show. But that's because that's that's of, what, of, what, of what you like. But if they were all bad vignettes, it would have been bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it's like it's it's like, uh, or people thought they were bad vignettes. Um, I mean, the I mean they did that. You know, when Russo was there, the ratings were on Monday. You know, they were in the same ballpark as what they are now. And you know, actually a year ago, you know, if you look at at because I just did the figures for uh, May, May a year ago the ratings were actually higher than May this year for for um for Raw. Although some of that may also be because you got SmackDown, so people figure maybe they can miss Raw to, and and still catch it on SmackDown. And the ratings aren't that much lower. It's like they're about like six point six five to six point six two. I'm just saying, you know. It's, Something like that. Uh, this is, we've got a couple more emails here just talking about how great yesterday's show was. It says, please have Ted on again. I want him on again myself. Uh, this is for Shannon Moore. Uh, it goes, um, I was wondering if you could ask Shannon about his official website. It was up for about a month, and then it died in early March. I'm willing to make one up for him and keep it updated on a regular basis. I've tried to get in touch with him by email, snail mail. If you could please just ask him, that would be great. Want to, want to want a website? What's the story on your website, Shannon? Um, well, as far as my website goes, um, I'd uh, let some uh, woman run my website or whatever, and she turned out to be a little crazy. So, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I really didn't really didn't dump into it as much as I should have, as far as information goes, trying to keep my website going. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking for the right person to run my website right now. Okay, um, it's. If you can, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. if they can, just email me again. I might have just overlooked their email. Um, I get, you know, I get a lot of emails, so I don't have a chance to answer every, all of it. But um, if you can, just tell them to keep trying and uh, just email me again. Yeah, I guess websites are like like 30 years ago. 
they used to have fan clubs. Every, you know, like every restaurant used to have a fan club in the 60s and maybe early 70s, and they all died out. And now it's back to everyone's got a web. Everyone's got a website. And and in those days, a lot of the people who ran fan clubs uh-huh. were real were really crazy women too. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it gets out of control sometimes. So I was like, you know, I, just, I won't get to dump that much into it. So. Yeah. I guess, I guess I see. I didn't have no idea that it's been taken off. That, that shows how much I really keep up with it. But, um, yeah, that's okay. You're not alone. You're not alone in that one. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is uh, from Dan Flowers, who says, uh, "What, what was your favorite WrestleMania?" Brian, I guess what we are, are we going to say? Are we going? I'm going to say ten. I'd say ten. Yeah. Okay. How about Shannon? What, do you have a favorite WrestleMania? Yeah, probably ten. Well, there you go. WrestleMania ten. <laughs> um, <laughs> The, uh, there, there were a couple of the recent ones I thought that were pretty good too, but um, I, I had to pick. I would pick ten. He says four. Well, what, what's your favorite match of all time? S- single wrestling match of all time? Yeah. Wow. Um, did probably be like a uh, something in Japan, probably like some all Japan uh, Misawa Kawada type of match. Uh, as far as the United States, favorite match of all time in the United States. God. Oh man. I don't know. I don't know. There's so many. Um, mm. I don't, Brian, anything like stand out? I mean, I like the Flair Steamboat. I remember the Bret Hart Steve Austin match at that WrestleMania was awesome. You know what I thought was even better than that Bret Hart Austin at WrestleMania was the one he had a Survivor Series. I thought, that was better. I, thought, better. I, thought, I thought the WrestleMania match was better than the Survivor Series match, but they were both awesome. I think it was just, you know, I understand like the story and everything at the WrestleMania, but I mean, as far as like just the match itself, I thought the Survivor Series one was so hot. Yeah. I also like the uh, Undertaker Michael's Hell in the Cell, but I still cry every time I see the finish with Kane runs in. Uh, that match was awesome. Well, what, I mean, what it was like Undertaker, Undertaker, Macon? Undertaker, uh, Undertaker, no, no, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels. Yeah. I I just remember, you know, I mean, because that was, that was the day Brian Pillman died, and I just, that I, I will always remember that match because I'm watching this match, and I'm like in a total haze. And I'm sort of watching this going like, I think this is like the greatest cage match I've ever seen in my life, but I can't concentrate on it. And I'm just like watching this going, I think this cage match is like out of this world. How is, and it was all Sean. And I'm thinking like, how is he doing this when like, and everyone on the card, that whole undercard, nobody could work because Brian Pillman had just died. They were all, you could see everyone was down. Every match was weak, you know, for, for obvious reasons. And then he goes out there and does this match that was like incredible. So anyway, Shannon, what, you got a favorite match? Um... Let me see here. Probably um, whenever um, Sean and Razor did the ladder match. That's probably, I like that. That was, that was good. The, the WrestleMania one? WrestleMania yeah. 10? Or the, they, they did another one a couple years later that was was also really good. Um, SummerSlam. That, SummerSlam, like maybe two years Jeff later. And them, Jeff and uh, Jeff and the ladder match with, with uh, Christian and was good too, I must say. That, for, stun, for stunts, that one was even better. Yeah. Just for um, yeah. high risk stuff, you know, like that yeah. leapfrog over the ladder into the leg drop and some of that other stuff. Um, just I, know, just, I hate to just pick out one match because of, you know there's just so much that sticks in your head. You know, just I don't know. It's, it's just hard to pull one out and say that that was a favorite match of all time. Yeah, I I, I think the best match that I ever saw live was uh, a women's hair versus hair match in Tokyo with Minami Toyota and Toshio Yamada. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, it just was a live match. That match was was just unbelievable, and and then the haircut situation was unbelievable because the one who won all of a sudden, you know, she won, she started cutting her own hair. It was very strange. Yeah. And it actually had so much heat that the um, the people who run the it was a Corken Hall in Japan. The people who ran the hall, um, they actually got very upset. It wasn't like there was anything like brutal in the match, like tables breaking or anything like that, but they were upset. Because of the haircut, because uh, Yamada, who lost, put up such a great fight in losing, which she did, and 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 it was like one of those things where the people paid to see a haircut, and they were gonna you know shave someone's head, and she wanted her head shaved because her hero was Chikus Nagayo, and she shaved her head, and she wanted a she wanted a shaved head, and I think she liked Magic Johnson who shaved his head too, so she, she wanted a shaved head, and that's why the match was done like that. But it was like the way that the, the, the reaction of the fans and everything after seeing this match, nobody wanted to see someone get their head shaved afterwards. And the ownership of the building, I remember they had heat like that day going like, you know, after that you shouldn't have shaved anyone's head. 
So, so I just remember that. And people were crying. I mean, when they were shaved, when they were cutting her hair, people were crying everywhere. Like all these, you know, it was mostly women women fans anyway. So, um, anyway, uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, this, this is from Wayne Coulter, who actually used to work for World, for WCW for a long time. In the Jim Hurd days, because I don't believe people understand that it is not wrestling on USA that is so popular. It's the World Wrestling Federation. Just because there's a wrestling show on USA doesn't mean squat. I don't think Paul's show fits the demo. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I mean, I agree as far as you cannot just, if USA wanted to, like, put some independent on there, um, it wouldn't make it. You know, of, of the three companies, you know, Paul's would be the weakest of the three for TV ratings because it doesn't have the exposure, even though I think... More often than not, it's TV's probably better than WCW's. Um, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll fail. I mean, if, if, you, if you're talking about a six rating, yeah, it's going to fail. Can it do a 1.5 if that's what the goal is on USA? I don't know. I might be able to. I, I don't know. There's so many factors. Yeah. I mean, you, you just don't know... You know, you, if, I mean, TNN, I mean, sometimes I think this, this, that this was used as an excuse far too much, and it was, and that was that TNN didn't promote ECW very hard, and they didn't. Um, at the same time, um, if they were on USA, and USA really did a great job of promoting it, you know, we don't know. It's really a hard one to say what, what, what exactly happened at that point. Uh, this is, what did you think of the Shima-Ricky Marvin match at the Super J? Brian, you didn't by any chance ever see that match, did yeah, you? Yeah, I thought. Did I've you? Shannon, 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 now. Okay. Yeah. Shannon, have you have you seen, did you ever see that match by any, no. by any chance? No. Shima Ricky Marvin. Um, that match was for a five minute match. It was it was awesome. Um, I don't know, Brian. What, what were your thoughts on that match? I mean, I was just like the whole problem with the tournament was you know these. I saw the first two and I saw this one. It was like you know this can't even hold a candle. But I mean, for what it was, it was good. But it just you know what did they need? What did they give them five minutes for? I think uh, yeah, it was too short. Uh, especially uh, Rick, Rick, I thought Ricky Marvin for moves is is just awesome. In fact, Sh Shan, you know, you, you would probably you probably like really like tapes of him because just for moves and everything, uh -huh. you know, and he's probably probably similar size to you also. Uh -huh. Um he's he's just done some moves I've never seen anyone else do. They're just they're really great. I mean, there's other aspects of his game that aren't quite up to par. I think that's probably what it was is why they only had him go 6 minutes was because they knew that he had weaknesses in doing a long match. But the thing is that they but there's ways you know, to hide that if, you know, you're working with somebody really good. Well, that's that's what I was going to say next, is that the guy he was working with is a tremendous worker, and, and they, they could have gone longer because Shima was, was really good. What, what do you think of the tournament as a whole anyway, Brian? I haven't seen the finals yet, so I can't say about the whole thing, but I was just so disappointed with, you know, it's just like, this is supposed to be the Super J Cup, and, I mean, if it were any other show, if it were like a WCW show, it'd be good, or even a WWF show, it'd be, it'd be pretty good as far as top to bottom. But there's just a lot of things on there that's like, I mean, there was even like a, a DQ. Oh, I know, and, 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 and like, a horrible what match. What the hell too. am I watching? Is this the right tape? Yeah. It's very disappointing. Yeah, um, I mean, I thought that um, the first day, I thought most of the matches the first day were good. Um, I thought as a house show, like, you know, or even a pay per view. I mean, just match quality, not with the, you know, explosives and all that. It would make a real good pay-per-view for, for both of those companies, but there was not one match on that show that was, like, off the charts. And, you know, yeah. you expect, like, lots of them. There was just, they were just a lot of, you know, men's T.O. was good. There was, like, a lot of good matches, but nothing great. Yeah, nothing that would, you know, you want to watch again. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. Has anyone talked about this? Um, with Rock's win on Sunday, when he got the title on Sunday, that he won the title. That's his fifth WWF title reign, which ties him with Hulk Hogan and Bret Hart. Is, have you even heard that one? I heard it, but I haven't heard it mentioned like by the WWF or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it. it I guess. It, I guess it says something right there. It's no big deal anymore. There's no big deal. You know, I mean, when so when I when I saw this thing, uh, Marcel Malika sent this to me. The other thing I thought of is, is like Helmsley's probably had it four times now, right? Would that number be right? Oh, God, okay. I don't even know off the top of my head. Okay, he, 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 won it, he won it in August, the day after SummerSlam from Mankind. Lost it to the Big Show, won it back from the Big Show. That's two. And? Then he um, lost it to Rock, and then he won it back. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, he, he won it. Vince, he, didn't he? He lost it to Vince. Okay, wait a minute. He, he lost it to Vince, and then. Wait. No, wait, 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 wait. Now, how did that go? He got it back a week later, Vince right? Vince vacated what? it, and then. Uh... 
the hell did they do after that? I don't even remember. Okay. But he had it back because then he lost the big show. He lost the big so show. Three. Okay. And then he lost. Then he he lost it to Rock in the in in the um the, the backlash match, and, and then he won it back, back in the sixty four. minute match. Before, That's four. Yeah. So he's only been on top as far as like in the world title picture for since since the end of August, basically September. This is last week of August. Here we are, at the end of July, and he's already got four. And so it's like people always talk about him being the long term champion. <laughs> and he's held it four times in like ten months. Yep. Okay, this is from Hector Ruiz who says, I have evidence the WWF is a good influence on kids. On Raw, there was a commercial that said tobacco is wacko, and the segment that followed featured the Undertaker offering Kane chewing tobacco <laughs> as they were coming to the ring. Kane didn't want it. That's a great example for kids to learn to say no to tobacco. I would say that that's great, except the other guy was chewing tobacco. Yep. You know what was also so weird was uh, somebody called me to watch his heat, and they said, I'm watching the heat show, and they have a commercial for people that, you know, cut themselves, self-mutilation. And there's like a self-mutilation hotline number that you call if you know somebody. And he goes, this is the strangest thing to see this on a WWF TV show. I guess. Blading yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, well, that's not, that's different. It's cutting yourself. It so is it's different. I know it's still it, weird. It's the same thing, but it's different. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Oh, this is about Canada. You know, I've been trying. Okay, here's what I what I've been because I've got a lot of emails about Canada and everything. Um, and and with the, with the change in the time slot, from what I gather, um, okay, WWF has like I think three years left on its contract with um, TSN. It's either two or three, and so right now they've got a contract with two different people. Um, you know, for because T TNN airs in Canada, as does TSN, so they got contracts with both of them for for Canada. So theoretically, the show should go on at the same time. And TSN, I think, is pretty much knowing because TSN edits the show so much because of, of all the pressures in Canada to do so that they will not be able to compete with the non-edited show. Plus, TSN preempts preempts um, Raw a lot and you know airs it later at night because they have baseball and hockey. So I think that they know that they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be in trouble. And that, you know, on a weekly basis, I'll bet it's just about their highest rated show, if not one of their highest. So uh, so they, they're ending up uh, in this in this battle. They're ending up, they're going to end up losing TSN. They're going to end up losing that when this is all said and done, most likely. Okay. That is pretty, pretty much, it's pretty much all the time that we have right now. Anything else, Shannon, before we go? Uh, that's about it, man. Hey, Brian, you get anything for Shannon before we, before we take off? Best of luck and get the Ricky Marvin tape. Yeah, get the Ricky Marvin tapes. You'll you'll get a kick out of the moves. They're great uh, moves and the great um, moves. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I have to get over there trying to find them. Yeah, the Ricky Marvin and uh, Shima Shima match, and then there was a ten man tag on the on the second one, which is actually did you see the ten man tag line? Yeah. Uh, the ten man tag is a good match, I think. That's a good match. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all that we got for today. I want to thank Shannon and Brian for for being here, and we'll be back tomorrow at six with Gene Kaniski.